So you have two landing castles and two counts with their own specialized mechs. Well, this is about to get very dicey, and this is the type of ending that I loved in All to Know Zero Season 1, because those cliffhangers in Season 1 were the death of me. It really was. And th this is the type of cliffhanger that I knew from Season 1. So this is the first time, I think, in Season 2 we've actually had a cliffhanger kind of centered like this, especially with the epic music, the build-up, with the landing castle coming in, all that. It kind of reminded me of the first episode when it came to Alden Ozer. Like, anyone else get those vibes? Like, when I saw the landing castle come in, you see the way it comes in, it lands, you see the, like, atomic bomb type mushroom cloud? That instantly made me think of the first episode of Alden Noah Zero, when it was a very calm type episode, slow build up, and all of a sudden that music played and you see how the explosion was done. That's pretty much how the ending was. It, it really reminded me of the first episode. I, I don't know if they were trying to reference that or just to show you how bad this situation is for everybody because they now have two counts there with their own landing castles. That, that's not good at all. That, that's really not good. So, in this episode, I just, I just want to say something real quick. Slain, you are the king of NTR. You're forever alone. I, I, I'm sorry to say it, okay? I, I'm very sorry to say it. I don't dislike Slane. Slane's a good character in my opinion, but to see how the princess, you know, remembered Inaho in some form or fashion because of the birds, and you see how he got, like, upset. Like, we didn't get to see his facial reaction, but we can assume it would be very, very similar to how his face was at the end of Old and Zero Season 1, because that face was the Forever Alone face. And we know for a fact, with the princess remembering Inaho in this episode, it's kind of obvious that He's not liking that one too bit. No, no, no. He, he is not liking that shit. So, all of you Inaho lovers that dislike Slain, most likely you're jumping for joy watching this episode. Because, like I've said once before, the fan base of All Noah Zero is split into two. Actually, no, split into three, to be honest. You have one side that's Team Slain, one side Team Inaho, and then you have the middle side, which I'm a part of. It's like, I like both. So, I know for a fact Team Inaho this episode, that they they got their thumbs, that they got, you know, all the smiles, like, yeah! That, that, that's what they're doing when they're watching this episode. Team Slain is like, you just wait, Inaho, we'll put another bullet in your head. That, that, that's pretty much what, you know, both teams were saying about this episode. But, getting off that, okay, th this episode of Old and Noah Zero Season 2, it was a slow, gradual build-up episode. Like, the first half of the episode was build-up, exposition, Fan service with the fraud princess, and then slain, 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 slain. Yeah, yeah, she, she said that at least six to nine times. I, I wish I was lying about that, but she said slain's name nine fucking times. I'm like, stop acting like a robot. I know you can repeat the audio clips over and over thanks to modern editing, but damn, I don't need to hear the princess do it. Slain! Slain for her first words when she kind of gets up. Like, I mean, I know she said, you know, Eldorito first, but that, that was pretty much her first dialogue of season two. And to see how she just acted like a freaking robot saying Slain's name, and then all of a sudden cock blocks him, or Inaho cock blocks him, and she remembers him, pretty much, yeah. So, the episode of Old No Zero, season two. It's a good episode. I have no problems with it. It's a very, very good episode. I, I really enjoy it because one of the main things I love about this series is getting to see the different perspectives of the other characters. Like, for instance, you know how Inaho's side is, and then Slane's side, getting to see their different perspectives, how they're progressing through the story, stuff like that. And it seems like Slane is now not dealing with no more shit. He's going down and he's, you know, making his new utopia, his new kingdom, because of what the princess did to him in this episode. So can't wait to see what's going to happen because the way this is building up, it can go any direction because the princess, she kind of lost her memories, which I called that shit, by the way. I freaking call... I, I'm not even going to go into it. Like, if you don't understand what is wrong with why I dislike why the princess lo lost some of her memories, then I don't know what to say. I, I really don't know what to say. It's my personal opinion, but I, I was just... I, I'm not even going to go into it because, you honestly, if you watch a lot of anime, you should know what I'm talking about. But if you haven't, mo most likely you might not understand why I dislike the, the amnesia type princess in this episode. Now, I'm glad she remembered, you know, in a host slightly. I am glad about that because we got to see the, you know, cock block of slain in this. And I was just like, yo. So, yeah. 
Tell me your thoughts. You all have a wonderful day or night. Looking forward to seeing what happens next week. I, I really am because it's, it's building up into something very good. I can't wait to see what direction this fight's going to take and what Inho is going to do to get out with his mechanic all-seeing eye. Be safe. She be out.